what the IE is, is it's a two-year program, so students are pre-IE right now, um, where they study six subject areas. Uh, it is an internationally recognized program, which means that they have a global mindset, and that global mindset is a focus in all of their subject areas. They can get up to three university transfer credits for the IB courses that they take. And my favorite part of the IB is the IB core. So this really helps ensure that students are um, well-rounded learners and critical thinkers. And so I will get into what that IB core is uh, shortly, but really that's one of the things that stands out in the IB. So of those six courses, there's three higher level courses that they have to take and three standard level courses that they have to take. Uh, unfortunately, they cannot take any additional IB courses. Uh, they only have room in their uh, schedules for three higher level and three standard level courses. So the higher level courses span three semesters. One semester in grade 11 and two semesters in grade 12. And that's the totality of the HL subject that they take. So in IB's mind, that subject is one continuous year. So what they've learned in grade 11 will be built upon in their grade 12 courses, those two um, semesters that they have in grade 12. The standard level, and sorry, um, the higher level is first year university level subjects. So that's where the up to three university credits come from because many universities, and I actually will show you a tool shortly uh, that tells you where those transfer credits can come from. <coughs> Many universities give transfer credits for those HL courses because they recognize that it's at that university level. The standard level is standard level. So there's two semesters of that. Um, for two of their subjects, they complete it in grade 11. So they are getting grade 12 courses in grade 11 and they're completing those courses in grade 11. So that's two semesters, about 150 hours of class time. So the subjects that we offer at the HL and SL level are there. Um, they have to take English, and then they can choose either business, global politics, or psychology, and then group six, which I will get into later because this is where things get a little confusing, is art or another HL level course. So they can take art or music, or something else at the HL level. And then standard level, we have language acquisition, so that's their French course. Sciences, which is SL Biology or SL Physics, there's also HL Chemistry there, which they can take as their HL course in Group 6. And then math. So the IB core consists of CAS, Extended Essay, and TOK. The theory of knowledge. CAS stands for Creativity, Activity, Service. And this is one of those core components that ensures students are well rounded learners. So, in addition to being an academically rigorous program, they also have to complete CAS. So, that shows that students can be creative. So, they have to do something that expresses creativity. An example of this would be 100 days of taking a picture. I'm going to challenge myself for 100 days straight to take a picture artistically, right? If I'm not an art student, that's a great creativity um, activity for me to do. If I'm more creatively inclined or more artistically inclined, then my creativity part can be create, paint a huge mural. Right, that would challenge me more. It's all about the students recognizing where their own strengths are and challenging them and pushing themselves further. Activity is physical exertion, contributing to a healthy exercise. So again, depending on where the student's naturally at, they can set their own challenges there. It can be setting a step challenge, or it can be participating in a marathon, depending on where they're already at. And then service, uh, it's positive and reciprocal engagement with the community in response to an authentic need, volunteering at a food bank. So unlike the community service hours that are a natural part of high school, there's no hours uh, attached to CAS. 
It's just about that challenge and those reflections on, on how they're well run awards. So an example of a CAS project of some grade 12 students this year, actually, is the IZ Mentorship Program. So current grade 12 students are setting up this program where interested grade 10 pre-IZ students can be paired with a current grade 11 or grade 12 student who will act as a mentor for them as they're navigating entering the IB program. The idea for this mentorship program is that it continues so that always uh, students will have somebody who's a year older than them who they can ask questions to, who they can go to for guidance, and they just have that person that they know they can rely on, in addition to their teachers and myself. The extended essay is a 4,000 word university level research paper. And one of the things that I always hear when the students come back, and I say, hey, how's the university going? What did you think? Did the IBU uh, prepare you? They're like, the extended essay, Ms. King. That prepared me. Because this is their opportunity to write a university level paper with the help, the one-on-one -on -one support of their teachers. Once they get to university, they're writing four, five, six of these essays in lecture halls where they don't necessarily have that support as a teacher that they know and they trust. This is a stepping stone to get there once they get there. So it's a 4,000 word essay, like I said. Um, it's externally assessed, which means that it's sent to the IB and they mark it. They're assigned a mentor teacher who helps them along the way, who gives them feedback, who gives them a predicted grade, but in the end it's up to the IB. Um, Essentially, they have to write a successfully university level paper and in a subject area that they're passionate about. So the really cool thing here is they can say, you know what, I'm really curious about uh, <coughs> indigenous land sovereignty. And they can write a full research paper on that. And they are matched with a mentor who's also interested in that. And then they explore it and they get to, they get to be their passion project. Uh, theory of Knowledge, this is my favorite course, but I'm biased because I'm the teacher. Um, it's one semester long course, but it's split when you French over grade 11 and grade 12. So this makes sure that students are critical thinkers. It asks them to think about why what they're learning in their everyday lives in their other subject areas is important. Why should we be critical thinkers in today's world? They gave you what's happening in the world, all around the world. It helps them think about what shapes them as a learner, what shapes other people as learner, learners, and like ask really good questions. So again, this is one of the things that uh, I hear about when students come back from university, but I'm also hearing about right now from our grade 12 students who are writing supplementary applications. And they say, man oh man, the number of times I've used TOK thinking in my supplementary applications. Thanks, Miss King. Right, guys? Yeah. 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 <laughs> or they come back and they're like, um, I have a required course in university that's philosophy, but I already took that because I took TOK. So it's not philosophy, it's more grounded in the real world. But a lot of universities are recognizing the need for critical thinkers. And that's what this course uh, says we should be. Marking and assessment in the IE, uh, IB is a bit different than what we're used to. So there's two major assessments. There's the internal assessments, which means that those are marked by the teacher and then moderated by the IB. So the teacher marks all of the projects and then the IB says we want to see six samples just to ensure that the teacher's marking correctly, that they're marking with an article. That's worth 20 to 30% of their overall grade, depending on the course. And then there's the external assessments. So these are the exams. The exams happen end of April throughout May, and they're worth uh, 70 to 80% of the final grade. Depending on the course, you have either two or three exams. So this is something that I, I want to make sure everybody fully understands, is that 70 to 80% of your grade is really determined within two to three exams. Okay, so it's a lot of pressure around that time. Again, students are supported all the way through, 
We have study sessions, we have teachers there to help, and they're prepared for these exams, doing mock exams all the way through, but that is where a big chunk of your mark comes from. How your grades are then determined after these internal assessments and external assessments <coughs> is actually in July. So teachers will give predicted grades. They'll say, this is how we think the student is going to do based on their internal assessment, which they have marked, and based on those mock exams. This is how we think we're gonna, they're gonna do. But we get the marks back from IB in July. And at that point, we adjust their grades. So in grade 11, they'll, have, they'll be writing two of their exams. It'll be SL Math and the SL Science they choose, either Biology, Physics, or Computer Science. Once it's released in July, I go back and I change their uh, grade 12 marks only for those subjects. So that's when they're in grade 11, they already have grade 12 courses. So that when they apply to university the following year, they already have grade 12 courses that are completed, which is not like most mainstream classes. In grade 12, they apply with their predicted grades. So the teachers do the best job that they can. And actually, uh, Dr. G.W. Williams, we do very good predictions, which is great. Um, and then they write their other four exams, again, late April, May. Results are uh, released in July, and at that time, I again change their grades. But by the time I'm changing their grades, they've accepted their offers to university. So depending on where they go to university and what universities they're going to, you're going to, you tell me if you want me to send your IB grades. So if you've applied with your IB diploma, if they've accepted you based on being an IB student, which again it depends where you go, then you say send my IB grades and I send them there. If you don't, then they're not sent there. They just see your predicted grade. Okay? Uh, this is the IBSO scale of equivalencies. So please don't ask me why. I don't know why. The IB marks out of seven. Sometimes I feel like they picked a number out of hunt. I don't know. So out of seven, um, the IB schools of Ontario, which is the association uh, in Ontario, looked at how well IB students did in universities and how well, what their OSSD grades were, and they made this equivalent. So what this means is if they get a level seven in their IB course, that's an OSSD level four, which is fantastic, and that results in a 97 to 100% in Ontario. Six. Again, level well, 4, 93 to 96. We see like, hey Siri, see Siri is about the IBSO skill. Um, so 4 above is above average, is what we see. So average mark would be around 4 or 5, and then above that is amazing. Okay, I'm going to go into our group offer, our subject offerings now. Um, this presentation will be posted on the uh, grade 10 Google Classroom, so you have access to all of these links. Uh, group 1 is our study in language and literature. We offer HL language and literature. If you're continuing in the IB program, you have to take this course. You don't have an option. Uh, same with French, we have SL French. Again, those are the course codes that you, you achieve with uh, having French. Group three, our offerings are business, global politics, and psychology. So students can take one or two of these subjects. Group four, in experimental science, we have biology, computer science, and physics. Students can take one of these. And uh, if you have questions, I have uh, the subject brief, so a brief explanation about all of these subjects set up in the library, along with students who are able to answer questions about what these uh, different courses look like. Mathematics, we offer the analysis and approaches math, and they get two grade 12 credits in grade 11. Group six is an 
art or one subject in any other group. So the way we have it set up here is they can take visual arts, music, HL chemistry, or another one of those group three offerings, if they want to take another one of those group three offerings. So either for, uh, psychology, business management, or global politics. Looking at the course codes here, something that I always like to highlight is the number of grade 12 courses that students achieve through the IB program. And when you're applying to universities, often they say they look at the top six. So what that means is they look at English, and you have two English marks that they look at, and then they look at any other required subject. So if you're going into a psychology program, they would look at your psychology program. Um, so any required courses. But one of the things I often hear is that their uh, French marks aren't great. But because of how many grade 12 courses they have, they don't necessarily need to apply with that French credit. Because they're already having so many more grade 12 courses when at the time of application than a mainstream student. So if, um, if they're worried about French marks, really, in my opinion, and, and of course there's stress that comes along with, with taking a, a second language, that doesn't necessarily need to affect their application averages. According to the IB, they graduate the SL French Language Acquisition Program being fluent in the second language. So they can claim that they're fluent in that language when they've graduated. And that's also when uh, I'll show you the university recognition page, that's something that they recognize that because if you've gone through the entire IB diploma, you, you're fluent in another language, they recognize that as part of the uh, application process. Uh, something else to consider is the sciences, so chemistry, biology, and physics, are offered in some at both grade 11 and grade 12. So this could mean different things. One, uh, if your student wants to take all three sciences, they still can. They can take um, biology or physics or computer science in group four, and then HL chemistry in group six, and then whatever they didn't take in such. What this also means is that if they want to take maybe not all three sciences, but two sciences, but they're still really interested in global politics or psychology or music or art. They can take that in their group six and take chemistry in summer school. HL chemistry is first year in university chemistry. If they're applying to Ontario schools, the Ontario schools absolutely still recognize grade 12 chemistry, grade 11, grade 12 chemistry, OSSD. So they're not getting IV chemistry, but you can still get grade 12 chemistry in summer school. The other courses are not offered at summer school. So in terms of having many options for you, taking some of the other courses in day school, so you can take chemistry, biology, physics if you want, in summer school as an option is, is a good option. And then you're still getting those, those courses but not having to take the first year university level, which is where a lot of people struggle with the IB program. Additional recognition, so everything from this slide um, actually came from grade 12 students. I said, look at my presentation. What am I missing? What do you wish you knew? Uh, so some things that they say is IB graduates enter the university with a firm foundation for their degree program, not just academically, but with excellent self-sufficiency and resiliency. They have time management skills. They know how to be good learners because they've learned that through this program before they get to university. Um, this IB online database is what I was talking about. Um, it contains recognition statements from universities all over the world. So again, that's linked in here and it's posted on the grade 10 um, graduating Google classroom. 
International universities, if you're applying um, internationally, Ivy is considered the most academically rigorous program for students to have accomplished. And when applying to universities, it's important to know that grades are only a small part of the application process. They want to see extracurriculars. They want to see big picture understanding of knowledge. They want to see that you have a growth mindset. They want to see that you have um, exemplified time management skills. The IB program is evidence of all of those things that they can speak to in supplementary applications. So this is the course planner tool. Um, it is linked here and I will send it out to everybody. Uh, it is just a tool for you to use when you are trying to figure out how these courses work within the six different subject groups. So it will build a tentative schedule for you so you can see how it would all fit, where, what it would look like, what courses you can take. Clicking on this link will force you to make a copy of the tool. So I, I ask you to just play around with it, to see what you would want to take. Next week, I'm going to come into the grade 10 classes and give a presentation for course selection. At that time, uh, I will also give them a form where they can tell me what courses they want to take. This will determine what we put onto my blueprint for them to actually enroll in those programs, into those classes. Um, but for now, we're just giving you the tool so you can play with it. What I'm also hoping is that you go home, you talk about this, you play with the tool, and then you have more questions for me so that I can answer those questions. Just a reminder, we can't guarantee that any of the courses listed will be offered. They are dependent on interest. So when you do have access to that form, please make sure that you're completing it with the best of intentions there. Explore the subject briefs that are linked on the slides. Explore the course planning tool. Complete the form. And please, please come and ask me questions. I'm in my office at the top of the main staircase. I know I'm sometimes hard to find, but like Mikey says, if you act, walk in one direction with purpose, you'll usually run into me. Um, so please come ask me questions. I promise I'm coming. Uh, I'm also going to be in the library, and students are there. Come join us there if you have any other questions. Thank you so very much.